right, 9.4.2, the comparison test. This is the last test of the, or the last lesson of the uh, year. So great job, you're just about done. Uh, 9.4.2, I normally start with a warm up of just finding an improper integral. So if you wanna take time to find this one on your own, it's good practice. Um, I'll run through it really quick. So find the integral from one to infinity of one over e to the x dx, rewrite it as a limit with b going towards infinity and just change that infinity to, to a b. I'm gonna to have to find the antiderivative. Right now I'm in uh, form that's good for algebra, not so great for calc. So I like changing that one over e to the x to be e to the negative x. It makes the antiderivative a lot easier to figure out. Uh, antiderivative of e to the negative x would be negative e to the negative x. I'm going to evaluate this thing from one to b. So plug in a b and plug in a one, I get this. Uh, now I'm gonna need to, find, need to find the limit as b goes towards infinity. Uh, this exponential form isn't so great anymore. I wanna switch it back to something like this, algebraic form, so that's what I will do first. And then as b goes towards infinity, it's pretty clear that this part here is gonna to go towards zero, right? Negative one over something crazy huge is gonna to go towards zero. So this integral, this improper integral is gonna get closer and closer and closer to one over e. Um, this is very similar to the one, one, one we did before, except I think it was zero to infinity before. Uh, easy enough. So the main point of this lesson is to try, try to figure out something like this. Does the integral of one over e to the x squared converge? Uh, this integral is significantly harder because at, up to this point, we haven't found out how to do an antiderivative of something like this. So we can't just work it out like we did this one and say, oh, let's find out what it converges to. It just doesn't work. Um, luckily, the question actually isn't asking what it converges to. It just wants to know, does it converge or does it not converge? Um, so to do this, we're actually gonna look at something else. Right here, I've got a graph showing one over e to the x, which is the one we found, right? This one we know converged to one over e. And here's one over e to the x squared. So we know with this one over e to the x, when we graph found the integral starting at one and going toward, towards infinity, that area we know converged and that area converged to one over e. The question we're being asked is does the integral from one to infinity of one over e to the x squared converge, this one? Well, that also starts at one, but as I can see, it's always, always, always going to be smaller than this one over e to the x. So really, I just wanna find that area. And I don't even have to find the area, I just have to say, hey, is this amount going to converge? And hopefully you can see the answer is yes because whatever it converges to, it's definitely gonna be something smaller than one over e, right? So this is definitely some number between zero, to get to more than zero, and right? I can see some area there, and one over e. So the answer is yes, this does converge. This converges to something between zero and one over e. This is known as the comparison test. I had something, a way to think through it here, yeah. This is known as a comparison test. So the comparison test uh, is when you tell, can tell if an improper integral converges by comparing it to another improper integral. So for example, let's say here, let's say if we know this is true, we know we've got two graphs and I know f of x is between zero and g of x. So here's zero. So f of x is always above zero, right? Let's just make something like this, whatever. This would be f of x. And g of x is always going to be above that. If that's true, then we can make some deductions. All right, I just put this fourth one in there. I had accidentally forgot to save it. So I'll throw that one back in there. All right, so let's talk about this. If the integral from a to infinity of g of x converges, then can we tell anything about the integral of f of x? And the answer is yes. If g of x converges, right, it's got some finite amount of area under that curve, f is definitely smaller than that. So if I know if g of x converges, then I will have to know f of x must also converge. 
However, if g of x diverges, if this um, area just keeps going towards infinity and right, then I have no idea on f if f converges or, or not. I just can't tell. Because maybe it converges or maybe it also diverges like g does. I don't know. If f of x converges, if this one converges, that doesn't tell me about anything about g of x because g of x might converge, it might not, I don't know. But then on the flip side, if f of x diverges, right, if this goes up towards infinity, then g of x will have to divide, diverge as well because it's going to have to be some area greater than f and if f goes towards infinity, so does g. So we end up with two things that we could tell. If the top one, the one that's greater, converges, so does the one below it. If the bottom one diverges, so does the one above it. This is known as the comparison test. So the comparison test says that if you know g of x is bigger than f of x, for all, for all numbers greater than the one you're starting, starting at, then if g of x converges, so does f of x. If f of x diverges, so does g of x. In other words, if the larger one converges, the smaller one must also converge. If the smaller one diverges, the larger one must also diverge. You're gonna be asked to do this a couple of times in the homework. It's just to try, it's to give it a try. Uh, the hard part is actually coming up with a fraction. So we're gonna do an example to help you out with this. This one says, does the integral from five to infinity of one over x cubed plus one d of x converge? So we look at this and here's kind of what you do. You think, I can't integrate that. Like, I don't know how to integrate this thing, but there is a simpler one I can integrate. I can integrate one over x cubed. Like that would be pretty easy to integrate. So we're gonna compare the two of these. All right, you can use a calculator to graph them if you like. If you do one over x cubed, let me think here. One over x cubed would look something like this. And one over x cubed plus one would look something like this. It'll always be a little bit smaller. The way, reason I can tell that without graphing is if I look at this, right? x cubed plus one means a denominator is always gonna be one bigger than this one. And if I have something like one eighth, and then I add one to that denominator, that means one ninth, that's gonna be a little bit smaller, right? One ninth is smaller than one eighth. So, the, so this one here is definitely gonna be smaller than one over x for the entire, I can say, all right, well, let's compare one over x cubed. I know one over x cubed is bigger than this one I'm trying to find. So if this one converges, I'll know that converges. If it doesn't converge, then I'll have to try something and see if I can find something else that, that yeah, that helps me out, right? If this, if this diverged, then that doesn't tell me much about this one, but we can find out if it converges. So here I'll just more like, like the process of thinking through for all values five to infinity, this one is bounded above by one over x cubed, right? We said this one was bigger. And it's bounded below by zero, right? I'm not dipping below the axis there anywhere. And so we can compare them. So this means if one over x cubed converges, then the integral I'm trying to find also converges. And so we explore that and find out if it's true. So here's the integral from five to infinity of one over x cubed dx. This is not a hard one to do. I'm gonna go back to my select tool, rewrite it as a limit. Again, this is an algebraic form. I prefer that exponential form when doing calculus. Do the antiderivative, negative one half x to the negative two. I'm gonna plug in a b, I'm gonna plug in a five, but now that I'm plugging things in, it might be nice to put that back into a fraction instead of exponential form. So just wrote that as a fraction. Now you can plug in the b and plug in the five, you end up with this. As b goes towards infinity, this part is gonna go towards zero, all right? Negative one over something getting really big, that's going towards zero, minus a negative one fiftieth. This one converges. Since this one converges, I know my original one I wanted to try to find also converges because this one is bigger than one over x cubed plus one. So since one over x cubed converges, so does one over x cubed plus one. Convergence test. That's it. 
you're done. You've got two problems to practice convergence test with. And then 39 and 40, those actually aren't convergence test problems. Those are just find the um, integral from, the, find the improper integral, just find the value, no convergence test whatsoever. Um, I put these in here because they are really good practice problems to remember your integration techniques. So there's a little hint here for 39 and 40. Remember to use use substitution or integration by parts when appropriate. So 31 and 32, try the comparison test. Which we did with we did with this one. We found out that yes, that did converge. Um, and for 39 and 40, just find what they converge to or if they diverge. See you guys later.